Hey guys, in this video we got another short course truck. This one is the offering from Losi. This is the Tenacity TT Pro. And we've been planning to do a bit of a short course shootout and some of the viewers have mentioned that you can't properly do a shootout without one from Losi. We came across this one at a pretty decent deal in my opinion. It comes with a gyro and a whole bunch of neat stuff. In this video we're going to get it out of the box. We're going to see what makes it tick then we're going to take it out and test it. And if you guys watch the channel, you know what that's about. When we're done, we'll bring it back in. We'll tell you what happened with the car, where the weak points are, the strong points are, and then we're going to ask our four questions. Is it fun? Is it durable? Is it worth the money? And where does it stack up? Hey guys, do you think this one will unseat one of the top 10? In this video, we're going to find out. Check this out. All right, so let's get this thing out of the box. Cool. Got the box. And of course, it's hooked down. Excellent. Wow, that's cool looking. That suspension seemed to work real nice too when you dropped it. Have a look at this. That was pretty simple to get out of the box, but it was restrained in there. There was a little bit of a puddle from something right in here on the cardboard. And that was on this inside bit. So as you can see on the cardboard here, something had a little bit of a leak in the front end. We'll have to look into that and see what that's about. On the box, it shows that this comes in a couple different colors and I managed to get the yellow and black one and those are kind of my colors. I really like that combination. Not such a fan of the other color scheme that comes with the car, so I was really fortunate to find this one. I can't wait to get down inside and see what this is about, but first, we've got to find out what comes in the box. So let's get it on the bench and check it out. Okay, so this is what comes inside this little white box. And the cool thing about Losi is they always seem to send you some batteries for your receiver, which a lot of companies don't do that. This is the radio that comes with the car and this is the DX3 and I absolutely love this radio. It's got excellent controls on it. It's really comfortable in the hand. All of the control surfaces are good. Everything feels real nice. And once you get this in your hand, you kind of forget that you're holding on to it. It just sort of sinks you to the car real nice. It's got good range and it's really quick. The cool thing about it is right up here, you can set your steering rate. And if you have an AVC receiver, this will turn the gyro up and down. But this is the one I like. The second one from the end, this one allows you to tune your brakes, crank the brakes up to maximum brakes or back them down so you're not quite as aggressive. On the fly, you can change it right there really slick. It's got your reversing for your servos up top and it does have that 50, 75 and 100% throttle limiter up here, which 
is nice when you hand the car to someone that's less experienced. You can kick it down a little bit so it makes it manageable. Here's your centers for your trims, for your steering, and your throttle. And that's pretty much all you need on that. Right down here is the binding button to connect it to any of the, the right receivers that go with this. And there's quite a few of them. On the top here, there is a light grid here. So if you're using the smart batteries, it'll tell you what the charge is in the vehicle. And that also is pretty cool. So this is a bonus. I won't have to get one of these for this car. It comes with it. Also in the packet, see what we got here. So we've got a basic tool kit and I noticed right away, we've got a speed pinion to make this thing really scream. So it's got basic Allen wrenches, a tire wrench here, and it does have that speed pinion and a couple of screws. I'm not sure what those are for, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to figure that out. Also, it comes with some stickers. Here we go. Some stickers for the kit and the manual. Let's have a look here real quick and see what kind of manual this is. So far, it looks pretty average. Showing you how to set your car up, tells you how to adjust everything, and it's in many languages, which is nice. What I'm missing here, and I'm hoping to find, is the blow up. Maybe it's on the back here. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So this is the explode right here for everything in the car. And the beautiful part of that is each one has a part number and you can see how things go together. So having a look at this, I'd say that is pretty well drawn out and pretty easy to follow. All in all, it looks like a good manual and Losi generally does a good job on their manuals. Okay, so now it's time to find out what really makes this thing tick. And I've got a small list right here that I've compiled. I haven't had a chance to get down in it, but we do have a laser nut which is built on the same platform. So I'm relatively familiar with the idea. It does have a 3150 kV motor in it, 130 amp speed control, aluminum shock absorbers, and of course we discussed the DX3 radio system with the AVC system installed and it is 3S capable. It's on the Tenacity platform, which is proven, which is very cool. The body seems a little bit boxy, but I can overlook that for style. It does have one cool thing, and this usually bothers people with a laser nut. Look at that light bar in the front. The laser nut lights are so bright that when you rip around the track and stuff, I get comments quite a bit about how bright the lights are. So this has a pretty good light bar in the front. It'll be interesting to see how powerful that is. The layout is just about identical to the laser nut, and I really like that car. It did have a few weaknesses to it though, and I'll be interested to see if those switch over to this one. On the laser nut, we were forced to put the aluminum outdrive hub carriers in it because these ones fail on the regular. We have broken a couple of arms. However, short course trucks are known to be a lot more durable because smaller tires, sh generally shorter arms, more strength. So we'll see how that holds up. I like the layout, it's very cool. I hope my batteries fit in that tiny little battery box they got right here. It does have a really thick feeling chassis and it should do a good job. We haven't been able to bend the one in the laser nut. However, we did have a problem right here on day one in the ra laser nut, this differential crapped out on, like on the first battery. It just toasted this, we had to rebuild it. Hopefully this one will hold up better. Everything else on that car is really good with no issues. That is a very good receiver. We had this in that one as well and it takes direct puddling and still it's not in a radio box. Look at that guys. Here, let's get this where you can see it properly. Look at this right here. That is an open receiver and it's water resistant. I didn't, didn't know how well that was gonna work. So just to test it, I completely submerged it off a huge ramp, powered my way out of the puddle with the laser nut and this never failed to function. I wouldn't recommend that guys. Just, it's just not a great idea. If you're gonna get this thing really wet, install some sort of battery box or radio box just to protect that because who knows what kind of corrosion will happen in the future. Still, all in all, it's a really good looking build and it has a little heft to it. So I'll be really interested to see how that works out. So there you go guys, that's what makes it tick. And it feels pretty substantial. You know what that means. It's time to take it out and test it. Check this out.
Hell yeah! is 100 times better than both of those other drugs. Like, straight up, with no both. Short course trucks, man. This one's awesome. Okay guys, so there's the running footage for the TT Pro, and this is a really cool short course truck. When it got out of the box, I really didn't know what to think of it because it seems to be a pretty tall layout here, but this is the ultimate slash, and it's got a low center of gravity, and it's amazing to drive. It handles really well, and I didn't know how this was gonna stack up against it, and of course, we'll find out today, but this is tall by design. There's not a lot of top weight in it. Yes, it's got the shell that sticks up that high, but overall, 
it's not a whole lot of weight up top, but like I say, it's by design. And what it is, is this is a small area here, but it's pretty flat. The thing is when you get on your side, you can turn the wheels into the ground, pull the, tr the trigger and it'll come right back on its wheels. But this small footprint up top makes it very unlikely, although it has happened, that you land on the top and have to do the walk of shame. Now this lands on its side, easy to rectify. You can get it right back on its wheels and away you go, which now that I think about it, I really like that feature. When the ultimate slash gets upside down, you're walking and that's just how it works. The tires on this are really cool and I wanna get into the details and we're gonna do that shortly. Keep in mind, we brought it straight in from our tests and we ran multiple batteries through it in many locations. And of course, these are bash tests, guys. We simulate the track area because it's pretty nasty weather at the tracks right now. And we found a beautiful location to do a lot of this footage. By the time we were gonna go out to the tracks, it was raining so hard, everything was puddled. So we didn't get the track deal, but at the same time, we did simulate it in our location so we could tell how it was gonna how it was gonna handle in all those rough conditions, the powder, the packed, we, we tested it all. And we're gonna get deep into the pros and cons. And then we're gonna get the four questions. And I already told you what those are. Is it fun? Is it durable? Is it worth the money? Especially for a kit that was put out in 2020 and it's now 2022. Is it still worth the money? How much has it gone up since it came out? And where does it stack up in our collection? Will this one make the top 10? Let's find out. All right, so let's talk about handling to begin with. And this is a great handling car with the height of it and everything. This is its longer brother, the Laser Nut, and it's built on the Tenacity platform as well. And it has the same basic arm design, but the Laser Nut has wider arms because short course trucks are inherently shorter when it comes to that type of thing. Also, with the stretched chassis here, this has a longer wheelbase, which makes it a bit more stable. However, the short wheelbase can turn a tighter corner if you can maintain traction. That's a real thing. Now, like I say, we didn't wash these up because we came straight in from the track and we wanted you to see what we've done with this. And it's still dirty and we'll clean it up afterwards. I promise we'll take care of that. But still, when you take a look at everything laid out in the car, it almost looks exactly like that one. And when you flip this up and have a look, and this is a nice feature on the laser nut, you just rock the body back and set these side by side. It's basically the same thing with a small change in the battery box on the laser nut with Velcro and the quick change right here of the TT Pro. And that's pretty cool stuff. Um, we didn't have the center differential problem that we had with the laser nut when it came out of the box. And of course this one's modified, but the TT Pro is absolutely stock the way it came out of the box. This thing is awesome, it handles good. The gyro is stupid fast on this, so it does a great job of keeping things nice and straight. However, when you hit the ramp guys, and I don't recommend this with short course trucks like this, but in small circumstances, maybe jumping 15 feet or something to that effect, this one handled it great. It nosed in quite a bit. It hit on the tail a few times. It rolled in a cartwheeled and it still handled awesome. Keep in mind that when you're running in grass and this is a great car for in the yard, as long as your grass isn't too long, of course. But this one here, grass is a real high traction situation. And I noticed that the motor got a lot hotter when running in the yard because it's high amp draw, high amp draw, high amp draw which heats up the motor, warms up the battery packs more because you're pulling more current in short bursts. Keep in mind with batteries, when you first pin them, you can pull a huge amount of amp draw and then it drops down to what the battery is good for. So you might pull 200 amps for a short bit. That's what these capacitors in here are supposed to help you do. It overrides and it helps surge that real quick to get the car moving. Then it drops down to what the amp draw of the battery is, which is usually plenty. This had some really good batteries in it. They were ADC and it worked really good, but that high traction did cause a little heat and it's still running on the stock pinion. So the thing with that is when we were out running in the wide open where this could go full blast, it didn't get nearly as hot because the traction level was lower and it was able to spin the tires and not pull so many amps out of the battery. And while we're talking about batteries, have you ever noticed that when you have a 10th scale, it's two or three S, even four S compatible, 
that when you put a 2S battery in it and you get into some traction situation, it cogs and doesn't want to go very easily. Once you're rolling, things work really good. Well, if the brushless system, it has to get enough current, find where the motor's at with the speed control to sync it, and then it takes off, and you can have them just sort of sit there and cog a little bit. That's why a lot of guys are doing this. Now, these are capacitors, and these are pretty good sized ones. These are for the larger cars, but you wire up a capacitor pack, these charge up. They're not batteries, they hold a current, but they don't hold it for long. These charge up, they fill that void. When you pull the trigger, it gives a lot more amperage to start with than these drop off and the batteries take over. And the speed controls, when you use these, they pull per section. In other words, each time it comes around a pull, the speed control sends a signal, it changes it, and it sends it to the next one and changes it. So the amp draw works like a saw. So it's high draw, no draw, high draw, no draw, high draw. That's the way those work. These fill that up because the batteries don't like that pulsing. That's why there's usually two or more of those capacitors built into the speed control. But in a lot of situations, that's not quite enough. That's why a lot of guys are adding these capacitor packs. If you're running 3S, it's generally not a problem if you're running your vehicle to its capacity. But when you run it on a smaller battery, that's where these things really help. And while we're talking about handling, look at the size of the tires on this. This looks pretty average as far as the short course trucks tires go. And they're really aggressive on the tread pattern. It's a really good tread pattern. They look pretty natural on the truck but these have a little weight to them. When you get up in the air and you grab the brakes, this will bring the front end down pretty significantly with these tires. And if you come in on a nose down situation, throttle will bring the nose up, but you need a certain amount of room to do it because these are pretty small tires anyway. So they do work better than some of the other short course tires, but at the same time, that does help with the handling when you start to get out of pocket. Plus, if you're going to get it in the air, make sure you dial the gyro off. And what that means is if you take the radio set here, now this is the DX3, we talked about that. This knob on the end, this is the AVC or gyro control. Now, if you crank this clockwise all the way till it stops, the gyro is wide open, goes as fast as it can. And at high speeds, it can become unstable and serpentine back it down to about 70 percent it'll still be plenty fast enough but the car won't start to waggle while you're driving straight on the ground however when you're going to get this in the air turn it off okay so all the way counterclockwise on this one turn that off because when you get in the air and those front wheels don't know what to do they'll start to correct and it'll change the trajectory of the car and it can come down on its side because of the centrifugal motion of the wheels, when you alter those, it changes the car in the air. With this turned off, the only action on the tires are what you input into it and nothing more. So if you're just gonna get small air, no big deal, um, maybe four feet, foot off the ground, don't sweat that, that's fine. But if you're gonna go long, big air, and we're not talking 20 feet in the air, but we're talking distance, 12 feet, 14 feet in distance, maybe three or four feet in the air, that's enough for the car to start to waggle due to the AVC doing its thing. But when it's not hooked to the ground, those tires don't know what to do. And that inertia that comes off of that centrifugal action changes the trajectory of the car without any input from you. And that can bring it down on its side, that can bring it down, brake hub carriers and all kinds of stuff. Now, we did come down that way before I turned it off to see how it works. And it works really well but once we turned it down, it worked really good. And when we came down on the sides, we didn't break any hub carriers. We didn't break anything in the steering. Everything seems to be holding up good. So as far as handling goes, I'm impressed, guys. And remember when we went over the unboxing for the components that come with it and we had two screws and a couple little stubs that we weren't sure what they were for? And it does have that speed pinion and a couple of screws. I'm not sure what those are for, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to figure that out. Well, like I said, we'd figure it out and we did. So what it comes down to is out of the box, this has no spacers down here. So a 2S battery fits and that's general for racing. A lot of these are raced at 2S and that makes sense, but I couldn't get a 3S battery to fit, not to mention one of the hard shell ones that I wanted to use in it. Well, I got to digging through that kit and I had a look at it and there's a spacer that goes here and a spacer that goes there. And underneath it on these two center pieces here and here, you pull those screws, lift this up, put the spacers in, use the two longer screws that came in the packet, 
and now this is 3S capable, all in one, ready to go just like that. You know, I've got a thing about Losi. I've always liked Losi, mostly because of my racing roots, I'm sure. But Losi does build really good stuff and I've always enjoyed their products. So it was really refreshing to see that they were paying that kind of attention. So let's take a minute and go over our pros and our cons for this vehicle because I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what the comment section is going to say about this one. Now I've got a list of things that I'm just going to read off for you real quick and get them out there in the open so that they're covered and you'll know what it is. So on the upside, we have stability. This thing is really stable. It's fast for 3S. It could be faster, but it does come with the speed pinion. Keep in mind, we ran this as it came out of the box stock, as we usually do. It's tough. It's controllable. The gyro is really fast, so everything works really quickly, and that's noticeable. The tires work very well. It's exciting to drive, and it doesn't matter. It's excellent for out in the wide open and in the yard. This rig right here handles the front yard, the backyard, excellent. It stops good, it turns well, it doesn't roll all the time the way a lot of short course trucks will. And it's just all around, it's an excellent rig in that department. On the con side, and keep in mind we're aware this is a 2020 vehicle and it is 2022, so the price has gone up a touch. But on the con side, you're looking at $499.99 to get one of these today. We got this one at a screaming deal. We found one online. A seller had one that was still in the original packaging, not opened, and we got a hold of this one for right about $350. And I knew that was a deal, so we had to grab it. Luckily, it did show up at the right color scheme because I really like the yellow and black. That works for me. But at the same time, I was trying to dig up the cons on this. Everything held up good. Basically just the price guys. This made a $50 jump from its release date to today, $50. Now I realize that all the prices are going up because of the economy and that's to be expected, but still for a 10th scale short course truck, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't think you'd have to shell out five bills to get one of these things, but it does come with some really good electronics and it handles really well. All right, so all that behind us, let's get on to our four questions. Question one, is it fun? Absolutely, this thing is an utter blast to drive and I took out three cars that day and I started with the Centon 6S, we ran the Techno 4 10.3 and then we ran this one and I gotta tell you, this one gave me the biggest grin on my face and I was giggling and chuckling and having such a good time with it because it seems a little unassuming when you first pick it up and you know get ready to play with it, but when it handles as good as it does, this thing's a shocker. I was totally not expecting it, but still with the Tenacity platform, a proven platform, it's really not all that surprising. So in the fun category, we're gonna give this one nine out of 10 for fun. Cause when you're giggling like that and having so much fun, you can't go any lower than that. And question number two, is it durable? Hell yeah, it's durable. You guys saw the bash footage, and like I say, that's bash footage. It's not just taking it out to the track to see how well it handles. For durability, I was really expecting to have problems in the carriers out here, in the laser nut, we broke the carriers. It seemed like every time that car went out, it came back broken in one way or another. This one has shorter arms than the laser nut. The hub carriers held up good. The tires are smaller and they're inset. So the axle hub is clear out at the outside, which means all of this action here comes right in on the spindle. It doesn't, it's not offset by a wide deal that can torque on it. So these held up really good. The servo is still working really nicely. The motor is still, it did get a little bit warm, but it never got hot enough to be a problem. The speed control didn't act up one time. All three differentials are working good. There's no broken anything on the front or the rear. And we shoveled this in several times from pretty good altitude and it took it. That being said, for this one, I'm gonna give it 10 out of 10 for durability because when it doesn't break anything, can you do anything else? And question number three, is it worth the money? And as always, that's an interesting question because if you have the money to spare and with gas prices the way they are, that's not as common as it used to be. But if you have the money to spare for 
that is a pretty good rig. It handles awesome, it drives good, the battery times were decent, and we were running 5200 milliamp hour batteries in it at 80C, and it run a good long time on each set, which was really cool. But still, at $500, that's a lot. It's just a little bit less than what we spent for this one. I believe it was a little bit less. I know that Traxxas Slash Ultimate was a fairly spendy rig, but when you really think about it, the Pro 4 SC10 was right around 350, and that was two weeks ago on our dime. And of course, the Arma Centon 3S is also less expensive. But in my opinion, they don't handle as good as this. They just don't. I mean, there's nothing else to say. And as far as the Centon goes, the way the chassis is designed, the way the tires turn in the front, it can spit rocks up into the steering and lock the steering out. We had absolutely no problems like that with this one. If you have the money, these will run anywhere. They'll run in the drive well, they'll run in the driveway, they'll run in the yard, they'll run on the track, they'll run in nature. These things are really cool and they go just about anywhere. So for me, I'm gonna say, yeah, it's definitely worth the money with a caveat if you have the money to spare. For what you get for the price, I think it's well worth it. For that, we're gonna give it eight out of 10 for value because you just get a lot. It is a lot, but you get a lot. But before we get into question number four, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to tag that like button. That really helps the channel a lot. The algorithm sees the likes and it allows the channel to spread to others. And the idea here is to get this information out to as many people as possible. We do this to help the hobby that's why we started this channel. That's why we keep things as stock as we can as far as the running gear goes because what comes out of the box should be what we're showing you and that's basically it. Unless we do a custom build or we intentionally build one that's modified, if you get one out of the box, when you watch the unboxing videos, that's what you get out of the box, which is really cool, at least in our opinion. These, of course, are our opinions, but that like button that helps more than you could know. Okay guys, and now question number four. Where does this stack up in our collection? Well, it's kind of an interesting thing because it doesn't matter how, you know, how it stacks up for stats, what's the greatest car out there, it's which ones turn us on the most. And that has a lot to do with all the four questions that we ask here. Now, the thing is, this one, it really surprised me, it did. And I shouldn't have been so surprised coming from Losi like that. Sitting in number nine right now is the Traxxas Slash Ultimate, and that's the only 10th scale in the top 10. Sitting at number 10 right now is this thing's bigger brother, the eighth scale rival MT8 from Associated. And this is gonna be number 10, unseating its brother, the MT-8, sitting in 10th spot, the TT Pro from Low C, the Tenacity Short Course Truck. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and don't forget that notification bell to stay informed of upcoming videos, like this one. You know, we really like these unboxing videos. You get to dig them out of the box and see them when they're pristine, new, shiny, cool looking. They all look cool when you get them out of the box and stare at them real close but then we get to take them out and test them and see if they're everything they're cracked up to be. If you guys have a low CTT Pro and you've done modifications to it, some that work or some that don't, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studios saying keep bashing guys.